Hey guys, a very warm welcome and we are going to talk all things food right now because that clearly has been making headlines and remember 80% of the world countries import food, 20% of them produce and almost everybody is looking at all the headlines and the events that are unfolding in the international markets. Joining me now to take us through that conversation is Peter McGuire of Exam Australia. Peter, hi, thank you so much for joining us and while the last week was busy, the weekend was perhaps even more busy with the OPEC and Allies meeting. But with them having uh, kept the output unchanged, what are you reading between the lines? Well, Manisha, I think, you know, and first off, welcome from Sydney. A couple of things. I think it took everyone by a little bit of surprise that bid up 2% up in Asia trade early this morning, which was very, you know, very strong for crude. And what we've seen across a lot of those base metals. So I think that there'll be further move to the upside off a, a number of key points. Now, I'm not expecting any surprises. The one thing that does create a little bit of uncertainty is the Russia situation and the implementation of that strategy. So I'm not sure whether Russia's going to be too keen on it. According to Novak, he's certainly not interested in it at all. G7 have got their own voices and certainly the EU, Manisha. So it's, uh, I, I sit here, I contemplate, we've got our next JMMC meeting uh, in two months' time. And we sit here and see how everything rolls across the next, say, eight weeks. Mm. Peter, would you also say that uh, also say that OPEC perhaps did not do anything because you had this big G7 and the European Union embargo as well coming in. And while the price cap has kicked in today, what is your expectation on what unfolds from here on? Well, I think the uncertainty, Manisha, as far as it does, this get up the, the really raise some. Um, some very, very negative views internally within Russia and how they're going to retaliate. I don't think they're going to sit there with their hands, you know, and just say, well, okay, that's the deal. So I'm expecting some fireworks to start and I won't be surprised as far as how they manoeuvre this, whether it's going to be, you know, payment in gold, we're going to see return to the ruble. What What's their strategy going to be? Because they hold a lot of the key components we understand their very, very strong relationships with OPEC Plus and certainly with the Saudis and all those key Middle East countries. So, Manisha, it's, as, a, as a trader, I think it's going to be dynamic and um, I think we're on a bit of an upward tilt as far as pricing. Oh, well, yes, Peter, we all know what OPEC plus and what that plus means in OPEC plus. It's majorly about Russia there. But, you know, there have been various reports suggesting that even if Russia does not retaliate in way of crude, which could be a case, it also could be in case of other commodities, whether it's palladium or nickel. And uh, do you think Russia would go that far? Well, exactly, Manisha. They hold a lot of key components to this equation. And this, the, the storyline is, as you have mentioned, the base metal story. You've also got from an agricultural standpoint. So there are many different ways that Russia can retaliate and how we are to sit through this and observe it. So it's the, the, the ball is in their court and how they decide on playing that ball is very, very much, um, I think, a wait and see from you know, consumer land and certainly from a government perspective across EU and, and certainly the world. How are you looking at India's position in all of this? Because we do understand that the price cap is at $60. The Russian rural is trading at $66, $67. Uh, mm. And India is anyways importing uh, at a discount right now. How would you look at the Asian consumers for Russia, whether it's China, India and the others? Well, a couple of things, if I'm going to I'll, I'll take a focus first off on China, Manisha, because, of, you know, we all understand that it's coming out of that lockdown mindset. And you've even had testing facilities in Beijing that have been removed in the last day or two. So they're really saying, well, it's, it's on the cron, not too much to worry about, and they're ending their requirements. So that means that it's pretty much game on for China. If you if you say that over this next two months, as far as a lead into Lunar New Year, so it's going to be a strong demand picture. I would say bid up. We've seen 16% up in the last week for iron ore. And a lot of the base metals, I think, will be bid up as well. And that will take, a, you know, a, a, a big tide will fill all boats. And I think that uh, crude will play into that as well. So as far as India is concerned, Manisha, you could see higher prices from here. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, and finally, no conversation is complete without understanding on where are we headed in sense of prices then. Uh, I know 14 December is going to be an important event in sense of the US Fed meeting, but yeah. would you say all of that has been factored in already? 
Well, I think so. I think, you know, everyone's more or less hand on heart that it's going to be 50 basis points from Fed Chair Powell. Uh, I, I saw that non-farm payroll come out on uh, Friday evening or Friday our time, uh, which was evening, Saturday morning at about 266,000 read, which was relatively strong considering. So uh, I'm, I'm going to say that I think you'll see prices higher from here, Manisha, 87, 88 bucks for Brent in the short term and then back through 90 for Brent. Uh, WTI will trail it by four or five or six bucks. And then I think that there's more momentum to the upside because of the uncertainty as far as production, certainly the storyline with Russia and uh, the increasing demand picture coming out of China. Oh, well, yes. And since you have such strong uh, uh, forecast for food prices going forward, how much is China and the winter season demand playing a part in this? Well, it plays a big demand because we understand as far as, you know, heating of homes and, and just the overall demand. People are back in their cars, but they're going to travel, they're going to holiday, they're going to, I think, be re-engaged. And you've got, you know, a, a, a big consumption base there. Not everyone drives a Tesla. So they're all going to be hitting up for petrol and they all got, and motorbikes. And I think the overall consumption is going to be strong. So I think that that's going to add uh, tension to price. And the overall picture as far as uh, production will have to increase to some point. That's where the JMMC will come in, uh, maybe within a month or even six weeks. Mm. Peter, one final question. This one is on natural gas. So even as we keep discussing crude oil, natural gas is a major worry, isn't it? Because by the time you are into Feb, and that is when the European Union also is looking to start curbing Russian crude product imports, and you'll be just done winters with the inventories much at the lower side. How is natural gas looking to you from December, Jan, Feb going forward? I think that'll be bid up as well, Manisha. Certainly the European price, uh, it's been, we all understand how heavily it's come under pressure to the downside, but I think it'll return to, uh, with, with the likes of all forms of energy, will be bid up. And I think that they'll really come to, you know, start to gain some momentum come mid-January. We're only, you know, five or six weeks from that date line. And then that edges into February and then to March. It's still very, very cold in Europe. I'm sure you've been there in February and March. I've been there and it's frightfully cold. So, uh, yeah, the demand picture is going to be very, very uh, significant. Well, we will all keep an eye on to that one. And thank you so much, Peter, for joining us today. So more bullishness perhaps may continue. There is just so much uncertainty as well. So $90 plus kind of levels in Brent is what we are looking forward to is what Peter tells us. Thank you so much as always, Peter, for joining us today with your time. Thank you. Thank you, Manisha.